Hey, uh, welcome to my channel. Um, for the first time, or again, if you are, uh, if you actually like what I'm talking about when I'm talking about books, um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, Lori Penny's Bitch Doctrine. Uh, yes, this is the actual title. It's quite provocative. I don't know if you've heard of it or not before, but this is sort of like a collection of essays by Lori Penny on feminism. And um, she, I believe, is a writer for um, BuzzFeed, among other things that she's also doing. She's British-American, I believe. Um, and she wrote a book uh, on one of the hottest topics in the world right now, um, other than Donald Trump, uh, on which is uh, feminism. So, uh, a little bit of a disclaimer before I'm going to start talking about it. I'm not going to talk about it too much in depth because I find feminism and the premise of feminism and sort of the different opin opinions on it a bit problematic. I think it's a very sort of polarized view and also, I mean, just I... You know, I'm not going to express my personal opinions on it because this is not what this is about. Um, I definitely am pro-equality, I definitely am pro-feminism, but I had certain issues with this book. I tend to have issues with personal essays on topics such as feminism, I suppose, um, because of sometimes I don't necessarily agree with the point of view of the author. Um, in this particular book, I kind of... it started out with a bang for me, okay? So yeah, let's get into the review. Um, I really loved it uh, when it first started. Um, I really liked her voice. I could really relate to what she was saying. Her um, opinion on, on matters of gender and gender inequality and the persecution of people of color and um, queer people is really on point. I do find that she pointed out things um, you know, very eloquently. She's a good writer, not the best writer out there that I've read, uh, but she's definitely, she has a strong voice. She, um, she expresses her opinions quite strongly. Um, you sort of understand what side she stands on. She keeps repeating herself, though. These essays are a little bit repetitive, and there were some things that I honestly kind of disliked about the book, is the fact that it was repetitive. Um, she kept saying how she was pro, you know, people of color and, um, you know, uh, minorities, you know, and uh, impoverished people, basically impoverished women, and um, how rape culture should be eradicated. My only... One of my problems with her essays was that she did not bring enough examples about queer people, about, you know, women of color, um, about instances where the rights of minorities were, um, you know, disrespected or when these people were hurt. Um, I wanted to see more of that. What I felt that she was doing more is she was talking more about her personal experiences, her point of view, her environment, um, how she grew up, sort of, and what I found a little bit, uh, not really upsetting, but I mean, it was slightly um, unnerving how what she seems to be focusing on mostly is the internet culture. And the internet is, with all of its, you know, innovations and how much ease it brings into our lives, there's like a lot of shit going on on the internet as well. There's trolling, there's death threats, there's... Because basically everyone with a keyboard and, like, you know, internet access is now an expert on the subject. And she seems to be... I know she's, like, an online journalist, so this is definitely um, her world, and she's writing about her world. But she focuses on it way too much. She even brings an example of this website, Return of the Kings, which is basically this uber-misogynist sexist, patriarchal, like, very pro-patriarchy website, and I'm like, no one even takes, I think, Return of the Kings that seriously. It has a following, it is quite known, but it's not as if people go into that website as if it's some sort of a mecca for, you know, male opinion. I think that the men who 
genuinely take that website seriously and take the, you know, the articles that are written there as gospel probably have, like, issues in their lives and um, they probably should go see a professional and not something like Return of the Kings. And reading the bitch doctor the doctrine, I'm sorry, like seriously, this title sounds so heavy and serious, um, but uh, it's it's more of a shock value, I think that was that what was going on here. Um, it's just, I mean, I I appreciate what she's saying, but um, I also think that she doesn't see the bigger picture, or she sees it, but she sees it from sort of like, you know, an online web perspective kind of thing. Like, she hangs out in her crowd of, you know, upper, because she does belong to the upper middle class, and she had, like, great education growing up. And sure, she had her negative experiences in life. And sure, like, she talks about, you know, how she's in a way, um, you know, the voice of the people, as they say, because she um, cannot really tell you what it's like to be a woman of color, to, you know, live in the U.S. or, you know, in North America in general, and being a person of color because she's white, and she didn't have to, you know, she's white upper middle class, so she didn't have to go uh, through the struggles that, um, you know, people from poor backgrounds um, had to go through. And I just, I mean, this was, you know, so, so I'm, I'm grateful that she basically does that. She does it fa fairly um, early on. And, um, you know, it's a great thing because she's, she seems to be very well aware of, you know, the privileges that she had growing up. But she sort of brushes them off quickly and says, oh, but I'm a woman also, so I had to deal with a lot of shit in my life, so don't forget. So even though I have this amazing, like, you know, upper class education, and I was like, and I had all these opportunities many people were did not have growing up or whatever, or even in their adulthood. Um, I'm a woman, so by default, um, you know, I, you know, I get discriminated on, and you know, etc. etc. And on one hand, I, I get that, I get where, she, where she's coming from, because this is a book on inequality and on how the patriarchy is trying to basically keep women down where they belong, like in the kitchen, whatever. Um, but it's written from these, from this almost amateurish point of view. And don't get me wrong; I'm not saying this is a bad book. This definitely is worth reading, especially if you're kind of, if you want to know what's going on in the kind of like millennial um, age group when it comes to you know self-expression and world perception. This book is like a nice, um, definitely a nice read, and it will enrich your world. But also, I just I want her to just go out there, you know? I didn't feel as if she did the legwork. I didn't feel as if she has the actual life experience to be talking about actual real discrimination. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, she for sure doesn't have that experience, but it didn't feel to me like she actually, you know, I mean, it feels to me as if she gets all this information from reading a lot of online news articles. Which is great, because she's a reporter, and, you know, she's like a woke person, so that's what woke people are doing, basically. But, you know, I didn't feel as if I was reading the actual reports of a journalist that went to countries where women are being really discriminated against. They really need, like, they really are oppressed. Like, not just, like, glass ceiling oppressed, but, like, legit oppressed. Um, where they are not allowed to drive, or they basically have to, you know, they're not allowed to go in the streets without, you know, a male escort. Where they have, like, genitalia mutilations. Where, basically, they are submissive to their husbands or their, you know, sons or their cousins. Like, any male, the closest male relative, basically. And I'm just talking about the whole world. There's, like, tons of countries out there that have this. And, I mean, or even, I don't feel as if she actually went and talked to a woman who's a single mother who basically has to live off welfare because, you know, the country does not recognize her as a person in need or, you know, they're saying all of this. I didn't feel as if 
she did it. I'm not saying that she didn't do it. She just doesn't really talk about it or I miss these passages. She just keeps repeating herself how the government is ruled by male patriarchy and like all these old white dudes just sit there like drinking their coffee or whatever it is that they're drinking, I don't know, and they're being uber misogynist and they're just thinking about ways to punish women. This is the kind of thing that I got from this collection of essays, that the world leaders, the only thing they care about, basically, is how to punish women, how to keep women in place, as if that's the, you know, that's their life goal. That's why they go to all these Ivy League schools where I guess they sit down and just think about ways to oppress women, you know, that's their only concern in life. And, um, I mean... I'm not saying that she's 100% wrong. I am aware that, you know, white male privilege is a thing. I am aware that patriarchy is a thing. I am aware that women are oppressed, that women are not given equal opportunities in a lot of fields, that women are discriminated against, that there's definitely rape culture, that geek culture, like all these boys that are like uh, the nice guys, they're actually quite awful sometimes. So in that sense... She made great points, but also she focused so much on the negative that she didn't say, but also, there are women in power. It is slowly, rapidly changing, so let's talk about the positives. You know, you know, she just talks about the negatives. She talks about, I mean, she does talk about some positives, but the negatives definitely win out on the positives. And she focuses a lot on sort of white male privilege, patriarchy. It's it's as if, you know, it's, it's if, as if men of color don't do awful things to women. It's as if men of color don't discriminate against women. And they do. This is from, like, personal experiences. So I would like, I would have liked her to sort of, you know, focus on that too. And also sort of do the legwork for her next book. Instead of just, you know, repeating the mantra people of color, queer people are being discriminated against, like, you know, show me instead of just tell me. I also can open, like, an online magazine and read about it, you know? Go out on the streets, talk to these people. And if you already did that, please include it in your book. That will be a way much more interesting and powerful work if you actually brought us examples, if you travel to all these places and you actually... You know, instead of just reading stuff online or from books, you actually, you know, connected with these people and told us their stories and, you know, gave their voice some sort of power because she has the power to do it. She has the means. She has, you know, a weight. Her name carries some weight. So I would like her for her next book or whatever it is she's planning on doing to actually just connect with these people and bring us their stories. Um, because frankly, this kind of felt like reading a BuzzFeed article a little bit. And I think that she does, like, write for BuzzFeed or whatever, if I haven't mentioned it already. So that was my... These were, like, my biggest problems, um, in the book. Also, she didn't really focus on the, you know, female toxic relationships that a lot of women undermine other women. And it's not just about men. We don't necessarily, like... The way she says it is as if... The only reason why women are pitted against each other is because we are competing for males, and that's the only reason why we ever come in conflict with each other, our competition for dick. To be honest, that's not true. Um, I have had toxic relationships with women, and it had nothing to do with dick. I'm so sorry for being vulgar. But seriously, it had nothing to do with guys. Sometimes women just hate each other because... It's human nature. It doesn't necessarily have to do with men. I mean, I don't think, like, her premise is that if you take men out of the equation, or if men change their mind view or their perspective, women are going to be BFFs. Women all around the world are going to be united in love and, you know, um, communication and equality, and we're just going to be, like, you know, a bunch of Care Bears walking around and, like, sharing stories and hugging and... That's not the case. Honestly, relationships between women are very, very complex. Um, they are very competitive. And oftentimes, that competition and that hate and that tension has nothing to do with men. 
So I don't know, maybe she was lucky enough not to have that experience in her life and she's like best friends with every single female she meets. In that case, good for you, tell me your secret. Um, but I'm just saying that, you know, she didn't focus on that, which I found a little bit upsetting because judging from this title, I thought that it's going to be a little bit more kind of like really outrageous, really like out there. She really did her job and she really can tell you what's going on in the streets. But to me, it just seems as if she's writing mostly from behind a keyboard after reading stuff online, after, you know, talking with people who come from the same kind of background that she does. So these are like generally good, nice people who do want to see change, who do want to see things get better, who are aware of like, you know, the discrimination and racism and all of that shit that's going around. But also it just seems like they're doing it from the safety of their like, you know, keyboards, like behind their computer screens. And I just wish that you know, it would not be so. I wish that they could actually bring me live examples. Um, that's my opinion on the bitch doctrine. Doctrine, oh my god, I cannot speak, I'm so sorry. Definitely give this book a read if you are interested in sort of the Gen Y perspective on feminism and, you know, upper class attitude. I don't even know how to define this book. Um, I really, it started out with a bang for me, to be honest. I really enjoyed it. I was really like with my fist in the air, shouting empowerment. But the more I read this book, the more I was starting to sort of doubt her voice. Not even doubt it, but I was like, you're making very, very good legitimate points. And you're pointing out really actual, factual things and problems. But also... You know, it just lacks a certain credibility. It lacks a certain, like, it doesn't really have meat or anything. It just feels like you're reiterating an article that you read online and you're outraged, which is a good thing because I'm outraged by a lot of stuff that I'm reading online. But also, I mean, that's not enough. Being outraged, if you're a journalist, being outraged by an article is, I think, not enough to give that weight, that powerful, really powerful weight to your voice. So that's my opinion on The Bitch Doctrine. Wow, I'm like all like enraged and powered up. Um, I do recommend it. I do think it's a, quite an important addition if you are into feminist readings. Definitely pick this one up and read it. I cannot guarantee that you will enjoy it. This is definitely not a historical explanation of what feminism is. But definitely give it a try if you're into it. And if you're, if you're, even if you're not into it and you're considering kind of reading about feminism or starting out, this is definitely like a good thing because it's not heavy. If you're not the kind of person that wants to get too much into history or you don't want to have like heavy sermons, ser heavy sermons, oh my god, look at me, English lit major, cannot talk to save my life. Um, definitely go for this one. Read it. Um, form your own opinions. I mean, if you've read it and you agree or disagree with my opinion, um, you're welcome, even more than welcome, to, like, comment. Um, that was my personal experience. I know this is, like, a triggered topic. I know that people have very strong opinions about feminism most of the time, especially the younger generation. Um, so I would love to hear from you. So, yeah, thank you so much. Bye!